Hello and good morning students. Welcome to today's class of English wherein we'll be talking about this poem called A Tiger in the Zoo. As you can see it uh, talks about a tiger specifically in a certain location and there are five stanzas. The poem is being explained and you know uh, the poet has put down his or her thoughts in five stanzas only. All you have is in these five stanzas do them need to be understood with which i'll take you step by step uh the whole point of learning this chapter if you observe it's uh, it has a tiger which is a ferocious animal and then you have a zoo which is a location uh the learning objective for this particular poem is uh is what you need to understand first okay the idea of freedom is important to know what freedom means what freedom looks like well sorry what freedom feels like and more importantly what it is to lose freedom all right and uh, this idea of freedom has been explained by the poet in this case through the situation of a tiger in a zoo uh please make sure that you do read the poem at least twice before you move on to the explanation it will make a lot of sense to you all right so the idea of freedom is important let's keep that in our mind this poem contrast a tiger in the zoo which is important with the tiger in the natural habitat think about the natural habitats that the tiger might live in it could be any forest it could be the sanctuary uh, it could be the manus sanctuary it could be the ranthambore sanctuary it could be the jim corbett sanctuary and there are lots of other sanctuaries the sundarbans as well so the poet contrasts you know contrasts the situation of a tiger in the zoo and then in the and then you know the same tiger or a similar tiger in its natural habitat as i mentioned a few uh, you know the sanctuaries so the zoo is important over here one location and the jungle so the poet takes you in these stanzas from zoo to to outside in the jungle and then back again to the zoo all right so please don't forget to read the poem on your own let's uh, see what these lines have he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet grage there's vivid stripes uh, a few steps in his cage now you can guess uh, there's velvet quiet and in his quiet rage the word quiet has been repeated for better effect for me, for you to understand that uh, you know his velvety the part of velvet quiet the part of velvet refers to the part of a you know any animal of the cat family who as you must know they're very quiet when they move all cats if you if you've had a cat in your house or in your neighborhood tigers also are of the same species they are cats and the other one the word rage in this case refers to anger quite rage which means an anger which ha the tiger has not been able to give out to express it's obvious that the first stanza talks about the zoo as the location because there's the mention of the cage then you have the next stanza which talks about long grass uh lurking in the shadow near the watering hole uh the watering hole in this case is uh, you know a pond or a lake in the natural habitat which if you've observed if you've seen those shows in national geography or in discovery channel or animal planet you will know that uh, you know that's where all the animals come and drink water lurking means hiding you know they do hide in the shadows in the long grass before they hide and uh, the watering hole as i've just mentioned talks about a water body where these animals go and drink water so not just a tiger but a deer and all the other bisons and crocodiles they all generally are in that in that water area and it's very important clearly this is a forest this is this stands at the second stanza talks about a forest moving forward he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge barring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village this stanza is well it's very close to a jungle at the edge of a jungle where there is a forest snarling around houses you know 
it could be a night time when you must have read reports of wild animals coming down to the villages in the jungle's edge where it comes to hunt, hunt for uh, those domestic animals sometimes goats and cows and any other domestic animal that they can that they can be so he should be snarling around houses he should be all right that's not something that is happening but this tiger in the zoo he should have been doing all these things but instead he's stuck in the zoo bearing his white fangs in this case the white fangs refer to the teeth the the teeth with which you know a tiger tears or kills its prey and his claws terrorizing the village clearly this is an instance of a forest yeah uh, then again we move to the next stanza which changes the location okay so he slides he snarls his claws in this case you can see he's they, they, they combine all right again back to the zoo he's locked in a concrete cell however ferocious a tiger is however powerful it is it cannot it cannot fight concrete it cannot break concrete stopping the length of his cage you know he's measuring the length of his cage and ignoring visitors which clearly means he is not really happy looking at the visitors what the tiger could have been feeling is really important in this case obviously it's a zoo uh, he hears the last voice at night this is the last stanza voice at night you can you have voices at night of the human beings obviously uh, patrolling cars uh, generally referring referring to the police patrol cars which you obviously won't have in the forest area so this clearly is the case of cities we know where zoo, zoos are located if you look at the example of the Guwahati zoo or any other zoo if you've been to any other city you will know that they are mostly located very close to the city or just inside the city so a tiger or any other animal hearing out these sounds is very common he stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Here the word brilliant has been used to bring out another contrast. His eyes are brilliant. The stars are brilliant. But look at the sadness that is there in his eyes. This refers to a zoo. Here we have the entire poem. A zoo and then a forest and then a forest then back to the zoo. This is where the poet takes us. It's kind of a journey, journey of thought. Leslie Norris. This is what Leslie Norris takes us through to help us understand the idea of freedom. Moving forward, these are the questions as you can see they, are, they will be on your textbook if you have the textbook. If not, you'll certainly have uh, your PDF which you can access all the time and very easily. Look at the way that I'm highlighting it. Uh, find the words that describe movement and the second question is words that describe two places these are uh, the questions which will help you if you try to find the answers it will help you understand the poem better moving forward with the questions and answers uh, the first question is from directly your textbook this is what i've noted down find the words that describe movements and actions of the tiger in the cage i've arranged them into columns right few steps of his cage locked in a concrete cell stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors so these are movements and actions in the cage them on the left column all right because the question asks arrange them in two columns on the left column you have this and on the other side you have the other column should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass snarling terrorizing baring his white fangs all these actions are happening in the wild which will help you understand the contrast which i initially mentioned Moving forward to CBC board questions, please note that your most of your questions will be in this form, RTC, reference to context. This was a part of the CBC 2007 paper. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps in his cage. Why? The guy, the, you know, the dragon would walk only a few steps? Because it's caged. Uh, how does the tiger move in the cage? It's not very, it, it, it uh, moves around in the cage with a lot of rage. You can see, uh, he takes a few steps in his quiet rage. Two qualities of the animal under reference, two qualities would be, you know, qualities in this case. It refers to his anger, all right, number one. And number two is, uh, you know, his quietness, that, you know, his quiet anger, number one. And number two is his lack of movement. 
his uh, desperation to move out which is very clear from this paragraph so the two qualities would be those why is in quiet rage the answer is very obvious because he is not free because he is not being able to move out the way he wants it's as simple as that moving forward to the next question he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village why does the poet try to what does the poet try to suggest through these lines the poet tries to suggest that the tiger has no freedom in this case he's he's saying that the tiger should have been in a better position all your answers if you have read these paragraphs which i have explained are from these stanzas it has been picked up so reading the poem is again i'm saying is very important um how does the tiger scare the people he scares obviously by growling and by baring his teeth if you must have seen those scenes snarl why does he snarl to scare people how does he show his presence by similarly by snarling around the houses all right okay so you have to write these questions and their answers both on your notebooks the way i've explained they are very easy these questions are some of the simplest ones uh they just need to be uploaded after you have taken the pictures moving forward to the next one love for freedom is the natural instinct of every living being there are 1 2 3 4 these are this is the fourth question uh, it was a part of the cbc 2016 and in this case i have written down the major points which will help you draft your answer carefully and properly you know uh, the love for freedom is the natural instinct of every living being comment so you have to put down your ideas why the love for freedom is is natural and why everyone should have it talk about the feelings during lockdown that's one major import, you know aspect which you can pick from your own personal life and share and feel how the control on the freedom was difficult for you during those times which is better now you can mention about the people who cannot walk immediately brings in the idea of lack of freedom of movement freedom should also be of you know of making a choice you know whether you can make the choice of your food of clothes of friends do you think so uh article 19 of the indian constitution guarantees freedom of movement on the basis of humanity all right movement by the tiger helps to socialize and hunt you know they they mate and they move around that's how a tiger lives a healthy life which is natural because tigers in zoos in lock up generally do not have a healthy life they don't live long it's a known fact the poem wants to you know highlight that it's not it's not fair it's unfair to keep animals to jail animals and confine them that's all 